Besides memorizing acronyms and medical terms, Ulster BOCES medical assistant students also learned about construction supplies and flatulence toys. Putting it together, I used um, PCB pipe for the windpipe and the trachea. And then for the lungs, so they actually expanded, I used uh, whoopee cushions. So you breathe into the back and they actually expand. According to Ulster BOCES Adult Education Healthcare Program Coordinator Diane Slate, the difference between being an average medical assistant student and a grade one isn't only about your test scores in anatomy, physiology, or medical terminology. There are certain things that are black and white and never change. But there are other things, the human element, that you constantly have to put in there. So yes, you have to go by the book and do so many things. But then there's that extra touch, or that extra embrace, or that extra smile that makes all the difference in healthcare. Slate says her instructors place a big emphasis on being compassionate, resourceful, and creative. To help MA students tap into their creative side, they were recently given the assignment of creating a three-dimensional art project that showcased their course of study. Students not only had to investigate the body systems, um, learn out, learn all about the function, but then they had to create, to build, to produce a replica of that system. Sometimes when you mix fun, they learn better and they retain it. It's the, the idea is not to just study for a test and then it goes out of your head. The idea is to retain it. That's true learning. MA student Donna Rodriguez had to get a little crafty when designing her faux female reproductive system. And I used um, the ovaries are made of like these little pairs that I got from Michaels and I painted them purple. And um, I got the tubing I got from Home Depot in the plumbing section. It's, you know, just tubing and, and I also used gloves, rubber gloves that I cut and I painted and I glued on the project also. And toilet paper roll. <laughs> which I cut and made, you know, part of the vagina. Students not only had to think critically, work collaboratively, but they also needed to hone their communication skills. The, the kidneys, which um, were represented by the water bottles and the filters, filter the actual blood and it's supposed to be clear water and it stays tinted because of the dye, but it's supposed to be clear and then it goes down the ureters and, and it goes into the bladder, which was the funnel. And for us, it would be our bladder, which would expand until we couldn't hold it anymore and we'd have to relieve ourselves. In an effort to foster more diversity and collaboration in the medical industry, students had to explain their project in both English and Spanish. Slate says the demand for bilingual and bicultural medical personnel has skyrocketed in recent years. The Institute for Family Health. We work very closely with them. Uh, they have 33 locations from, I believe it's Bronx and Harlem, all the way up. We're the northernmost area for them. And they come to our mock interviews every June to interview and recruit our medical assistants. And they specifically want bilingual medical assistants. It's very important for them, not just Spanish, but if they can pick up a little bit of every, a little bit of every language. It's better for them, it makes them more marketable. Learning another language was difficult for some students and easier for others. Most difficult was for me was the Spanish. Um, luckily there are students in the class that help us we kind of work together but the pronunciation of it was the difficult part because I don't speak Spanish at all. Anna Rodriguez says she speaks Spanish fluently and enjoys giving tips to others to help learn the language. How you see it is very different than how you pronounce it. The female reproductive system. El sistema reproductivo de la mujer. Um, uterus is utero. Slate lauded these adult students saying that many of them work full time, have families, all while continuing to study, attend clinicals, and prepare for tests. I don't know if I could put the required time and the energy into doing what they're doing. So if they're giving that 100%, the least we can do here is give them 150%.